What's up, everybody? I hope you're doing good today. It's a beautiful day. No, it's not so beautiful. It's very cold today. I hope you're doing great. I'm doing okay. Uh, today, we're talking about Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe has received 18 helicopters from Russia. Zimbabwe took delivery Thursday of helicopters reportedly purchased from the Russian Federation. The event was attended by President Emerson Mangagwa and the chief executive of the Russian state corporation Rostak. The aircraft will be deploying for policy, wildlife protection duties and disaster management. Zimbabwe is under sanctions. We are constrained, unlike our neighbors and the rest of the world, to acquire the tools we need to mitigate the impact of cyclones and disasters in our region. The event took place at the Robert Mugabe International Airport in Harare. The Russian envoy to Zimbabwe was in attendance. According to President Mangagwa, cooperation between countries and the sanctions only makes sense. Russian Federation is under sanctions. Zimbabwe is under sanctions by the same people for different reasons. Then you are told, don't speak to that guy who is under sanctions when I'm under sanctions. You are saying victims of sanctions should not speak to each other. What nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> this man, I have a lot of respect for him. President Munangagwa of Zimbabwe. He says Zimbabwe is under sanctions. Other countries are under sanctions. Now, you're saying people that are under sanctions should not speak to one another. What nonsense is this? I mean, yes, what nonsense is this? It's like you're coming to a neighborhood and you're a bully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're a bully. Literally a bully. You say you're going to beat Mr. Alpha. You're going to beat Mr. Belta. You're going to do such and such thing to Mr. John. Then you wonder why John and Alpha and Beta are talking to each other. Of course, they're going to talk to one another. If you are the one that all the time tells people, if you do this, I'm going to chase you out of my house. If you do this, I'm going to kick you out of the whatever. Why are you surprised when these people come together? They will come together. Like, like I always say, even if you send it to a company as a chief or a boss or a new manager and you find that things are not working properly at many levels in a company, you do not come to the company and try to change everything at the same time. You're going to create enemies. You need to tackle one problem at a time. If you change everything, even though you're trying to do good, everybody's going to be upset with you because it's not going to be about the problem you're trying to change. You are going to become the problem. It makes us proud that in the current geopolitical situation, Russia and Zimbabwe, as the old weather friends, enhance their interaction despite threats of sanctions and challenges of the turbulent times we live through. According to the Zimbabwean Presidential Communication Office, out of the 18 helicopters delivered, 12 are ambulances, while six are designed for law enforcement. The fleet will reach 32 by 2025. So the helicopters have been delivered to Zimbabwe. Out of 18, 12 are going to be ambulances. Obviously, it's a great move because living in a condition that we live today, something may happen to somebody, a car accident or something very similar, very far away from an hospital. They can be teleported from that place to the hospital in a few minutes, which is great for Zimbabweans. We all know Zimbabwe has been under sanction for many, many years. For those of us who don't know, Zimbabwe was ruled by the British many, many years ago. The British took a lot of land, they cultivated it, they work as agricultures, they work as farmers, the mines in some of the places, and did a lot of activities in this land. When Robert Mugabe came, he said, why are you investing in other countries? Talking to the British in Zimbabwe, he said, you said you are Zimbabweans, but why the money that you are making out of businesses in Zimbabwe is being sent to England and not being reinvested into Zimbabwe. If you really are Zimbabweans, like you say, even though you're born from European descent, why are you not reinvesting your money in Zimbabwe economy? You are sending your money away in England. It means you know that you're not Zimbabwean at heart. You don't really want to be there. You're just profiting from Zimbabwe and what it has to offer and sending your money back to England. So he decided to take the land from the white people at the time. He took the land from a lot of British and gave it to Zimbabweans to work. That was the main reason why he was sanctioned by the West. They didn't like the fact that one president from Africa could kick out literally Europeans and taking the land and giving it back to African nationals. Whatever happened later happened. So now let me put it this way for you. If you are sanctioning Robert Mugabe, accusing him of being a whatever, being a dictator, 
uh, angry man, a crazy man, and all that stuff. Like they always do when it comes to that. Like they've done with Gaddafi. Like they've done with many other people. Thomas Sankara, John Pombe Magufuli. If you are supposedly sanctioning the president of a republic, how does that work? Because in reality, the president is wealthy. How does that work in reality? Because the people that are feeling the sanctions are everyday people are workers, are agriculturists, are office workers. It's a normal human being that are feeling the sanction because the president of Zimbabwe, obviously, in his palace, he's got a lot of money. If you cut supply of meal, cut supply of eggs, cut supply of oil, cut supply of whatever, who do you think you're making suffer? If the price goes high, who do you think is suffering? Do you think it's the president suffering? No, the president is definitely not suffering. It's the everyday people that you are punishing. I don't know what the goal was, but the goal was certainly not to punish the president. The goal was certainly to punish the population of Zimbabwe. Many years after, after the death of the president Mugabe, the sanctions in Zimbabwe are still on, even though they say they were sanctioning the president of Zimbabwe. Let me just remind you here, guys. Zimbabwe is the country that all the most literate people in Africa. Yes, Zimbabweans go to school. A lot of them finish university and college. A lot of Zimbabweans have degrees. But unfortunately, because of sanctions, they are unable to benefit from their own investment. And that's the reason why you're seeing a lot of Zimbabweans coming to South Africa looking for a better life. A lot of Zimbabweans going to Europe and other places looking for a better life. Earlier this year, Zimbabwe had banned lithium export because Zimbabwe has a lot of lithium. And lithium is what you need for the production of cell phones, electrical cars, for the production of batteries and green power. We are currently moving into an era of green. People need batteries for their Tesla cars. And Zimbabwe has got one fifth of the production in the world. They say Zimbabwe has banned lithium export after the government says it was losing 1.7 billion euros from exporting it as a raw mineral and not processing it into batteries in the country. Lithium is so valuable as a component of electronic batteries, mostly for cars, mobile phones and computers, that is known as white gold. The price has gone up by 1000% in the past two years alone. Zimbabwe has the largest amount of the mineral in Africa and has enough of it to supply a fifth of the world needs, the government says. So Zimbabwe has got a lot of lithium. Why has Zimbabwe banned lithium export? Because most international companies that come to Africa to look for minerals, they come and take raw minerals instead of developing local industries in a country where they get the minerals from. So they say like many other African countries, Zimbabwe has allowed its raw mineral to be extracted by multinationals for decades without developing local industry that could process them and create many jobs. So by creating industries in the country, you create many, many jobs for the locals. And many of these companies do not want to do that. They just want to come to Africa, take the minerals as raw, and go to the country and create opportunities for the people. And by doing that, Zimbabwe is losing 1.7 billion euros. So this president, who's not a pushover, is a soldier. He said, you know what? From now on, if you want our lithium, come in our country, build the industry of lithium here in our country, then you can extract as much as you like. Then later on, he said, you know what? You can keep your business. We are going to build our own battery industry in Zimbabwe. So again, as you can see, fellas, this president is not a pushover. I personally think that the fact that he's a soldier also plays a big role into his behavior. Yeah, because military personnel most of the time have a very strong level of self-respect and discipline. And it's not a pushover. I just get the sense that the majority of corrupt politicians in Africa are usually civilians. And strong people that tend to move to the right direction are usually military or with a military background. And this person is not a pushover. And I get a sense that the West felt like after the death of Mugabe, the replacement will be easier to manipulate. It's clearly not the case. President Munagago has been very strong with his stance. A while back, for those of you who know, he was asked by a journalist from CNN how he felt about men marrying men in Zimbabwe. Same-sex marriages and uphold that until that issue in our country is not an issue of the political party. Not same-sex marriage. I'm talking about same-sex same-sex relationships never mind we can put marriage to stuff i'm talking about same sexual activity in our current constitution it is banned so I don't, your country i is, don't think that is in a uh, very small minority my, i don't think with my priorities today i would grow my economy right uh, 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 increase the standard of life of my people putting that as a priority and he said to him very clearly, this is not our priority. This is your priority you're trying to make our priority. We have other issues to deal with in Zimbabwe. We have poverty, we have sanctions, we have so many other things to worry about. Men marrying other... 
is not our priority in Zimbabwe. He was saying very clearly to this person, very strong and very intelligent person. A few weeks ago, an Australian oil and gas company announced that oil and gas helium in a remote north eastern Zimbabwe was discovered. Yes, analysis of it in its remote site near the border of Mozambique. So they have discovered oil in Zimbabwe. Imagine lithium for your cars, your electric cars, your batteries and stuff. Then you have oil. It's unbelievable. You see how African countries are placed. You see why they don't want us to develop. Because if we are given the same platform as them, we have the resources. It's very difficult to beat us. So therefore, you must create wars in Africa. You must create division. You must create issues. You must bring in sanctions just to avoid giving Africans the wings that they need in order to fly. So let me know, fellas, how you feel. Once again, Zimbabwe has received 18 helicopters from Russia, a country that's been sanctioned. They can't even get their own helicopters and stuff or anything. So is it bad that Russia has come forward and said, you know what, since you're sanctioned, here are the stuff you need. We're going to supply you with the things that you need. How do you feel about this? Do you feel that this president is arrogant? Or do you feel like he's moving to the right direction? Let me know. If you like this, please join us. Let's build this community together. It's always with big pleasure. I hope to see you again very soon in our next edition. God bless.